Welcome everyone to Touch and Base. I'm your host, Eric Arnold. And today I'm joined by my friends, Joe Olson and Andrew Naw. Guys, how you doing? How are you now? How are you doing? Great, thanks. Well, good. We have actually, even though it's been two weeks since our last episode, we actually saw each other um, in the first ever uh, Maryland sports blog, uh, Touching Base Golf Challenge, I guess. Um, and it can only be described as challenging. Yes, yeah, so I was challenged for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, but it was really good seeing you guys good catching up, but I'm still, um, you know, I prefer to see you guys at a distance. Um, <laughs> this is better for our relationship. Uh, but we're going to talk a little bit sports today. Um, particularly, um, I want to talk to you guys about, uh, the nationals and kind of baseball. Um, and if we have some time, I have some Olympic questions for you guys, um, you know, that we can get into. Um, but before we do any of that, uh, for a reminder for our viewers, um, and we've actually got a couple of them. Um, we like to get together once a week. Hi, Mrs. Um, Arnold. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hi, mom. Hi, dad. Uh, you know, thanks uh, for, for getting together, watching this. And, uh, and we like to, to have a drink together um, once a week, especially, you know, during the time of COVID and everything else, although it seems like that's kind of opening up. Um, but even though we're at a distance, we still like to share a drink. So the ever important question, what are you guys drinking tonight? Well, I've got, uh, in the spirit of me moving to Pennsylvania in a few months, I've got the Yingling Golden Pilsner. So we'll be living about an hour away from the brewery. So we're looking forward to that. Um, still grinding in on the uh, the Land Shark, uh, what seems about a 48 pack at this point. But uh, I did just take a count. Uh, I took attendance. This is one of four remaining. So hopefully uh, between a couple of tonight and a couple of the next time, we'll be done with that. And I can spice up my life a little bit. I bet you go back to the land shark. I Most likely. Well, bottles yeah. this time. It's completely but different. But if you don't, <laughs> there is one here that I would highly recommend uh, that I've been I've been killing away. Of course, I've got, you know, my light shining into it. Almost like a celestial being. Uh, we've got the Mully's Brewery. Uh, we, we've got the uh, blonde, uh, blonde orange, uh, blood orange blonde, excuse me, um, you know, which I will be uh, mowing down. Um, I've done a count. There are about 12 of these in my refrigerator, um, but there will probably be zero by tomorrow morning um, if I play my cards right. Um, nice. Summer has started for me, um, and, and I have the rest of this week before I have to worry about anything. So not only will I be enjoying this one, I'll be enjoying 11 more. Um, and then I might be enjoying the guest bedroom <laughs> a little later this evening. Uh, but we'll, we'll, I'll just be watching this over and over again. Um, so real quick, um, summer's here. It's, it's, it's starting off hot. Um, but right now, nobody is hotter than Kyle Schwarber. Um, we were just talking right before the podcast. He's probably hit another home run by now. Um, but that guy um, has been on absolute tear since he's been playing, uh, you know, first base and he's been batting leadoff for the Nationals. Um, he currently has 16 home runs in his last 18 games. Um, he's got 12 home runs in his last 10 games. Um, he's got from June 12th. Um, if you counted the home runs from then on, he's got more home runs than any other team in baseball combined. Um, so he is on an absolute, what they say, heater um, and tearing it up. Um, are you guys paying attention to it at all? I'll tell you what, the fact that I have Kyle Schwarber on my radar says how hot he has been <laughs> in the last couple of weeks because I have not even spoken his name in any conversation in probably at least three or four years. And so I mean, it seems like every time we turn around the last two weeks, he's hitting another home run or two. And the Nats have kind of like ridden his hot streak to their own hot streak. I mean, they're 13 and four over the last 17. And two they weeks are ago, I said to sell everything they had. I said, sell Max Scherzer, get rid of everybody. And, and now they're three games out of first. It's crazy. And that division, they just kind of beat up on each other, it seems like a lot. And so. I mean, ride it for as long as it goes because Kyle Schwarber's hot streaks and cold streaks are long lasting and affect the entire team. No, how about you? You've been paying attention at all? Um, well, um, I, I haven't. The short version, uh, longer version is um, I, I grew up a baseball fan. I, my, my parents, both sides of my family are from the Bronx. I, I was born a Yankee fan. Uh, when I moved to Maryland, that kind of receded a little bit. I wasn't able to watch them all the time. And then I, the, the Capitals kind of replaced them in my heart a bit. And I kind of understand why the rest of the country essentially doesn't like Yankee fans. Uh, I say that to say this. Uh, it, it's been a little while, but when I was watching back in the, you know, the, the most recent Dynasty days, like that amount of home runs in the, that short a game was, was pretty decent. And my suspicion is that it's still, it's still pretty decent. So that's, that's kind of where I'm at on it. 
Yeah, well, it's funny that you start talking about that because that's something I wanted to ask you guys about. We had wanted to talk about it two weeks ago. Um, we just didn't quite have enough time. Um, but really, you're right. Like baseball, for I think for all of us, and I grew up playing baseball my entire life, um, you know, had scholarship opportunities to play in college, um, chose not to do so, um, but the opportunities were there. Um, you know, nothing, you know, no D1, you know, I wasn't playing soccer at Wisconsin or anything like that. Um, but, uh, you know, I got a couple small time offers. I, I knew what I was doing a little bit, but even I, as a passionate, you know, captain of my team kind of guy, I cannot keep up with it. I, I, I and I, I tried to put together, um, sort of a list for you guys to talk about, um, and, and, and tell me what you think about here, but I don't have the same level of level of interest. And you're right. That that's not just a me thing. It's not just an Arnold household. Um, that's just a, you know, that, that is a national thing. Ratings have gone down. Uh, people originally were kind of blaming COVID, but if you look at the numbers, numbers have gone down progressively um, for the last several years. Now it's still very much third, you know, when, when you do like the rankings, when we talk, you know, uh, football, basketball, baseball, um, it's secure in that top three, whichever category you want to look at. Now, arguably some of that could be because it has so many freaking games um, you know, it, it, their numbers might add up um, to what it is, but still their, their World Series numbers are okay, but they're down um, and, and everything seems to be down. So I want to ask you guys, you know, why? Um, and I've, I've got a couple things on my list, but just, just out of curiosity, before I get into my list, um, what are your guys' initial thoughts? Well, I, I wrote down a couple of things. And the first one is that we just don't know how much time a game is going to take, right? All the other sports that we talk about, football, basketball, hockey, soccer, whatever it is, they all have kind of a finite amount of time in the game. And so if I'm signing up to watch a baseball game, it could take two hours or it could take five, you know? The and average game is over three hours long. The game itself is slower than a frozen sloth on Benadryl. It is the <laughs> longest possible scenario to sit down and watch. And my attention span doesn't last a 30-minute podcast, much less a three-hour baseball game. <laughs> the pace of play is ridiculous. I mean, I think that a frozen sloth on Benadryl is something everybody can relate to, so I'm glad you brought that up. That's perfect. Uh, but, I mean, honestly, we can't go – like, if we go out to dinner and our wives go to the bathroom, like, we, we can't not look at our phones. So every time that there is a down down moment in a baseball game, it's just an opportunity to get distracted by something else. You know, We're shortening just... movies now, you know, like the series – you know, they're 30 minutes and then you can kind of watch them in spurts on Netflix or something like that. Now they're doing these limited series instead of like one movie, you know, all to combat that and combat, you know, our phones, you know, <laughs> like it, it, the attention spans are, are lower. Um, so to sit down for a baseball game, you know, it, it's ridiculous. No. Yeah. It's interesting. I, th I think back to it and like what viewership for baseball was like for me. And like I said, growing up, like I grew up outside, not too far outside in New York city. It seems like baseball was always on in someone's house right yeah. like my mom my mom still watches it you know my mom was 70 x years old still like she came down the other day visited and she come she was telling me oh the yankees were losing when i lost them on the radio right like she's still into it and i think a lot of my baseball viewership and fandom came from the fact that the game was always on in my house and that's just what you did on a saturday afternoon or Sunday afternoon or you know mm -hmm. evening i used to i'd go to summer camp and get home like oh, you know 705 735 like What's Bernie going to do tonight? You know, like what, right. what, what, whatever it is. Right. And that's what it was. And then, you know, I got older, I got into the things that I was doing. I went off to college and I wasn't watching all the time, but I'd still get in on the playoffs. And then, like I said, when, when I moved in, I couldn't watch it every single day. Um, and, and that's what I'm, I'm kind of I'm beating around the bush, but like, I don't even know that I would have it even at that point because of some of the things we've talked about, right? Like it is fairly slow. And then like, when you get introduced to something like hockey, that's just like, you Much almost faster not pace. look at it because something could happen. Mm -hmm. Right. Like it's hard to go to baseball. And I love going to games. Uh, I used to, when I lived down your way, so go to the Blue Crabs game and have just a great time. Um, it's an experience. Like, yeah. Going to the game is still an experience. Well, yeah, for sure. And I, I think, you know, when I was in school, uh, in college, and I, I went to, to college in the Bronx and I, we could, my buddy and I would walk up, you know, um, I don't know the road, it's not too far, but would walk up to Jerome Avenue and, uh, and catch the four train and take it right to the stadium and, you know, buy $5 bleacher tickets. Right. And it's like, we could see the Yankees for $5. Like, you kidding me? Um, and we we did that a handful of times. So, yeah, like going to game, different experience. And I think I still would go to a game. Um, 
but uh yeah just to like sit and watch on the tv like 162 times like no i got other things i gotta do yeah so that that's number two on my list is 162 games like 162 81 home games when do you watch sports it's usually when there's a story that's already been created it's in the final few minutes it's in the final couple games it's when the playoffs start happening you know with, with baseball i can sit out for several months and still like right now we're talking about the nationals you know they're kind of making their play right now which is great i might catch it but really i'm just going to kind of pay attention to it still you know, I'll, I'll, I'll chime in maybe when Max is pitching, you know, if, if I saw like Strasburg is coming back or something like that, which, you know, he probably won't, um, I, I might chime in to see how he does or some, some other major storyline, but really I'm almost just kind of keeping track of it in the back of my mind. And then when it gets closer, then I'll start chiming in, you know, I'll go to a game on a Wednesday. Like, I mean, I, I've already gone to a handful of games this year, but it's been more for the experience is people coming out of town who just want to go up and see a game. Um, and it's something I can do you know, that they'll enjoy. But I'll tell you what, there's not $5 tickets, you know, <laughs> like yeah. it, even no. that's, uh, you know, becoming a, a more of an expensive evening. I mean, by the time, you know, we win, I think it costs us almost 200 bucks for, you know, tickets, you know, we got like, I don't know, two beers at the game and a hot dog. Um, I mean, it, it was a very expensive evening for us. I mean, it's, it's not the, the, you know, taking the train up and, and paying $5. Yeah. I, I should clarify. That was like early two thousands in old I, I get, stadium I, I get against like, you know, the Seattle, Seattle Mariners or like even interleague play where, you know, sure. um, yeah, yeah. I, it's, it's still, it's, it's too many. Um, you know, I don't know how they fix that. I know some people are going to, you know, say that we can't do it. It's a tradition. Um, but I, I do think baseball is, um, is dying out. Um, Another one that I have on here, um, I don't know if you guys have it here, but I have the lack of the, like being able to keep up with fantasy and the lack of gambling. Um, you know, if football, I pay attention to, I know it's only got, you know, it'll have 17, 18 games now, whatever, but I, it's hard to gamble on baseball because there's so many things that could possibly happen. Um, it's hard for me to keep track of any kind of fantasy team. Um, I've attempted to do it. I know I, when I had my first desk job where I had nothing to do all day, I'm sure my employers are really happy to hear that, but I was <laughs> doing nothing but paying attention to sports scores. And even then I couldn't keep up with my fantasy baseball team <laughs> because there was just too much stuff constantly going on. And, and I think, I think that factors in, what do you guys think? Yeah. I mean, so you talk about gambling and everything like that, the, the, the teams don't even play the the same there sometimes like a, a player on your fantasy team will have a different off day than a guy on another team and right the makeup the makeup of your fantasy teams is so much different and i mean they they normally do fantasy baseball leagues like covering a week you know so that's normally the guys will have the same amount of games within that week but it's just like everything else. I mean, it's just so much to track. And, you know, unlike fantasy football or basketball, even, I mean, it is just a much, much smaller sample size that is really easy to track in the palm of your hand. And so I just think that at the end of the day, it all goes back to, we want to be able to watch sports and pay attention to sports that we can track in the palm of our hands on our phone. And like baseball is the toughest one of the major four sports to be able to do that there's so much stuff that's happening in a baseball game that can't be seen on a TV. There's a lot of chess that's happening for, for those who understand the game. And they're and that's a different, totally different sub subject. Most people who watch baseball have no idea what they're watching. They, they think they know what they're watching, you know, but I, you know, we've had these conversations. Most people have no idea what's going on. And really the stuff that you need to see, you need to be at the game. Cause I need to see where the second baseman's shifting to. I need to see well, how the outfield is going to look. And that's difficult to do by watching a live game. Um, and that's, and that is difficult to see, you know, just on TV and not only that, but baseball has switched into more of a power hitters, you know, game. Um, you know, the, the idea of they're all going for the home run and we're just sitting around waiting for these guys to hit home runs. Now Schwarber, we don't have to wait that long, but for everybody else, we have to sit around and just wait and wait and wait. And, and I know that some people want like the power pitching and they enjoy the strikeouts and they enjoy those kinds of things. Um, but, but the strategy of the game has, has changed drastically. Um, it's power pitchers versus power hitters and essentially waiting for the long ball. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, go ahead, Joe. No, I was just going to add that. I think that it, the, the, the end of the day, we're just talking about that. We just don't know like how much time we're committing when we're watching baseball. You know what I mean? And like, I'm a twins fan and I can, 
flip up my MLB TV app, and within 30 seconds, I can see every important part that happened from last night's game, and I feel like I know what happened. And, and you so feel caught I, up. Yeah, you're, you're with it. I'm with it. I can have a discussion about it with whoever wants to talk about it, but like all those intricate parts of the game, the shifting, the strategy of the outfielders, the batting lineups and all that stuff, you don't see that on your phone. And honestly, I just think that a lot of people are moving too fast today to be able to pay attention to that stuff. Yeah, I think you've made a good point, um, you know, both talking about like the the kind of the subtleties and the um, it's true of all sports, right? Football is the same way. There's a book, um, I'll never remember the author, but it's called like Take Your Eye Off the Ball or something like that. And there's all the things exactly like you're describing, the nuance that goes into the game, the subtlety, the alignment right. of a cornerback just, you know, can either give away coverage or disguise the coverage, et cetera. Right. And like, you know, I, I, I coached football for a little while. Like I got into it. Like those things are just phenomenal for me like give me that all 22 right. give me that in zone cam like i want to see it all the time i watch it at hours i'll rewind the tv like copy right. and look look at stuff football is still approachable if you don't have that level of interest in the nuance right because there's something happening every 40 seconds baseball you just don't have that right in unless the ball's being put into play you know to, to for your, you know the kind of the example they've given right for the for the common fan that are just there for the entertainment nothing happens unless the ball's in play Wait, and even so then, like, how yeah, many plays yeah. are routine? How, I mean, like, yeah. if there's a yeah. fly ball, you're not wondering if he's going to catch it. I mean, like, it, it it would have to be an error. I mean, like, it would have yeah. to be, like, if there's a ground ball to shortstop, or it, it's not an absolute, you know, um, just rocket going through the infield, you pretty much know how the play is going to be. And if I'm watching Sports Center, like, if I'm watching, like, the highlights of a game, I can pretty much know what happens. I mean, like, it's always the same thing. You know, I can see, you know, oh, guy makes a great catch, dive, you know, catches it. It, 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 there's something about the way that baseball is even replayed and shown that it looks like the same thing every single time. Yeah. I mean, if you, if you talk about just being attached to their legacy and everything like that, I mean, the, the resistance to change, I think is probably worse in baseball than it is in any of the other oh my sports. Gosh. I'm so glad you brought that up. Like, I, yeah, I'm going to finish your thought, but I, I have something on that. Yeah, I mean, so uh, first of all, we talk about I kind of know what amount of time I'm committing if I'm watching football or a basketball game or a hockey game. It, baseball, not only do I not know, but I mean, just the it seems like all the other sports have changed their rules and changed what's good. Like you talk about the changes in overtime in football over the last few years, like they modified that to kind of, you know, move the game along a little Faster. bit faster you know what i mean and basketball has never really been that long to begin with and so like it's a finite amount of time and baseball they've done a couple of things like adding a runner and extra innings and things like that and adding timers and stuff like that between pitches but like there's still so many parts of the game that just have no time limit limit on them there could be a, a 15 pitch at bat there could be a right. couple of pitching changes in the same inning you know there right. could be a couple of walks you know just a big blow up 10 run inning that just have no time limit on them. And people just, I think that they just lose interest and they start looking at their phones. Yeah. I, I want to ask you about that on how to fix it here in just a second, but you bringing up the idea of kind of the historians and the purists and, and, the, and those kind of people, we've all talked to them. Um, we've all been friends with them. Heck, Andrew, you and I played softball with one of them, you know, <laughs> but like. Any softball, how are you, bud? <laughs> But the purest of baseball are point dexters who don't know what they're doing. Like they are numbers nerds who who don't understand. Ooh. They can understand every statistic. They can tell you, you know, every, you know, historical contribution, but they have no flipping clue of what they're actually watching or what they're actually supposed to be doing. And it's annoying as piss because they get so mad about the history of the game. Um, but what they don't realize, the game's going to be history if they don't keep up. There are too many other sports that are far more interesting to pay attention to than baseball. We only had a couple options growing up as a kid. I played, it was essentially soccer, football, baseball, or basketball, you know, it's maybe like my fourth option in this area. You know, now we have hockey, we have, you know, MMA even for kids. They're, they're doing like that kind of stuff. Um, there's more things to watch on TV. Like you were talking about, you know, your mom watching, you know, all the Yankees games. I remember my, my grandmother on TBS watching every single Braves game that ever came on. I could tell you every single thing about Otis Nixon and Terry Pendleton and, and all those guys, you know, from, from back in the, you know, the Smoltz, the Maddox, you know, the, the long ball, like, you know, Glavin, all those guys, Denny Nagel, 
you know, <laughs> like some of the fun ones from, from back in that day. But these point dexters who sit there and watch all these baseball games and spout statistics at you are some of the most annoying people to sit next to at a baseball game. And it drives me flipping nuts. There's something different about an avid historical baseball, baseball fan than there is a football fan, a basketball fan, a hockey fan. And it, the number one thing that's the difference is they are by far the most annoying people on the friggin' planet. They don't strike me as the time to go out and get a lot of sunlight, to be honest. I'd be surprised to encounter them at the game. No, absolutely not. This is their one opportunity to get away from grandma's basement and to, you know, go pick up her groceries and, and take you know, Muffy out for a walk and then come back. And it's always a Pomeranian. But, oh, 100% chance, <laughs> you know. Like they're keeping in, in, in the game and in the in their in their book and everything like yes that. yes those are the guys I'm talking about and and if any of you are watching which I doubt <laughs> if any of you are watching I'm talking to you you're ruining it for everybody else <laughs> with all your bull <laughs> statistics telling me about what's going on it's annoying as piss Watch you went a little you went a little too far going after the scorecard keepers. Only because, like, my coach in JV in, like, circa 1990, whatever. Your senior year? <laughs> was super impressed by how well I could keep the book because, you know, somebody in my – someone somebody's Irish cousin or something showed me how to keep score at a Yankee game, you know, and, like, I was the only one that could do it. Now, that's probably just lots of reasons for that, but whatever. Neither, neither here yeah, nor there. Yeah, that's why you were on the bench. Keep it yeah, score. yeah. <laughs> I was just – it was too valuable to keep really the, the record right, of this you know. JV game that, you know, was essentially in a parking lot. <laughs> Right, exactly. You can't put a price on that. You know, we, numbers don't lie. And I know my boy Andrew wouldn't. Uh, yeah, those those guys right there. I'm telling you, because they annoy everyone who lives around or around them. And there there's some. And every time you talk to them about it, it's like we can't change any rules. We can't advance the game. They have a billion unwritten rules they get mad about. You know, if somebody gets hit by a pitch, all of a sudden that's disrespectful to the game of baseball. If someone, God forbid, throws a bat because they hit a game winning home run they are the worst person on the planet um you know it it, it drives them nuts and it, and it drives everybody else away because you just don't feel like dealing with it and I, I think that's happening more than what we're talking about now we love pointing out problems <laughs> let's can we point out any solutions to these things and, and we've talked about a couple of them um do you guys have any initial thoughts on on, on fixing it my 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 initial thought would be they're the only major sport that doesn't have a salary cap right now, which oh, that's interesting. Which rules out like you know fifty percent of the markets for these major league baseball teams. No, in Yankees any... fan, <laughs> I'm talking to you. <laughs> right, and so like I'm talking about being resistant to change. All these other sports have put in salary caps to increase parity in their leagues, so all the teams have somewhat of a fair shot of competing year in and year out. And baseball is by far they're creating a more global market or a more at least at least not continental market because everyone's been good for a little while i mean like you, you know even the nats won the world series in 2019 uh, even if they suck this year i'm still going to pay attention for another couple of years because they won that world series yeah but why why have they not had a salary cap like why did the yankees get to spend 400 million dollars and then and the twins can't or the royals can't or the diamond they're just choosing not to stop being poor <laughs> Yeah, that's 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 what it is. Yeah. No, I, I, mean, I I agree. I'm sorry. I, not to cut you off. I, I I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think I would like to see something. I think that's a you know just in terms of parity, in terms of like, it's a little bit more interesting. There's other things that happen in the course of a season or an off season that start to matter when you have something like a salary cap, right? Because you have to be, you have this guy, the shawarma, shawarma, whatever uh, that you were talking yeah, about earlier. Kyle shawarma. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I, he works out on the corner of, um, you know, down in Baltimore and uh, across from shock trauma selling his, yeah, mm -hmm. his wares. Same guy. Um, so uh, uh, I've not ruined it. Somebody else talk. Uh, okay. So pay, pay supply is one that we talked about. I really do believe that there should be a pitch clock. I believe that once the batter steps into that batter's box, they get their sign and they are in like, they do not get to step out and touch their jock 16 times, you know, to try to figure out what they're going to do on the next pitch, because that takes place. They, they should know essentially what they're doing, step in the box and stay there. Pitchers get on the mound, throw your pitch, get back to the mound, throw it again. Um, I th also think the idea of every time they go out, they have to warm up is absolutely ridiculous. Like I, I get like <laughs> you, you need a second for maybe like the pitcher to walk out to the mound. And if, especially if it's been a certain amount of time, but like when you have like a one, two, three inning, 
There is absolutely no reason why you have to walk out and the third baseman has to warm up his arm again. Yes, there is. What? What's the injury? I know you're going to say injury. To sell advertisements. Oh yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That's 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 true. That, that, Although, that, as the NHL will show you, television. you could you can squeeze those in in a lot of ways. Find another way. You know. Yeah. What I mean? No, and that that's 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 fair. I was I was just getting your goat. Like, I, you're not wrong, and you got it. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations, like, but but they have got to figure out um, how to how to get that going. They don't need to warm up. I would say, especially like if you're not a brand new player, you know, it is your responsibility to be warm by the time you get out to the field. When there's a turnover in football. You don't get in, in your, you know, nursing an injury on the sideline. They don't care if the game goes on, like you have to go out there. Um, I wish they would do something like that. I wish there was also no mound visits. I would say absolutely none. If you're going to be taking them out, you take them out. Everything you need to say, you say before he gets out onto the field, um, you know, with the pitcher. Like that, that's a valid point. I mean, like how fragile are their psyches that they need like words of encouragement, you know, right. like. If, pitch the ball or don't you know do you like, need like to rest your arm for a second because you've been getting pelted around maybe you know like a part of me gets that uh so so maybe you get like the catcher and come out there one time and give you a quick you know a, a breather or something like that to let your arm rest i get that um but at the same time like you don't need to come out there and i know they've restricted the number of limits but you don't need any you really don't like i've never seen them walk out and go hey man i'm going to take you out the pitcher says no you're not okay no it hasn't happened sure but typically they walk out and before they get out there, they do this little number, you know, and then the guy from the bullpen comes running out the pitch and the other guy leaves. You can do that from the dugout. You don't need to go out there and explain the game to them. They know what's going on or they should know what's going on at that point. Um, I also think you should make it easier to steal a base <laughs> because if they're making all these things easier for home run hitters, I would actually like to see some of the excitement comes when a guy gets on base. And, and I, I think we need to start rewarding some of these, these speedsters um, to make the game a little bit more interesting. Cause that's, that's when some of the other action, you know, can happen. Um, so if, if how that's going to be I'm not exactly sure, but if you, <laughs> but, that was my question. Yeah. I, I, I can't guarantee anything. I don't know. The umpire gets to punch the catcher in the back of the head. <laughs> like <laughs> if he wants that, you know, that solves a lot of problems too. Um, you know, but if they could somehow make it easier for those guys, um, you know, might, might maybe limit the number of throwovers. You know, you can only throw over the first base, you know, so many times in a game. Um, you know, that might be an answer. Um, you know, if they're not, you know, worried about it constantly happening. Um, but I don't know. What do you guys think? Any of those well, ideas you like, dislike, or I mean, you're acting like you're acting like the ideas for shortening the game haven't been brought up yet. I mean, we all play bar league softball and things like that i mean how about on the third foul ball the guy's out how yeah. about there's, <laughs> yeah. there's a run limit of five runs in an inning how about if you're up by 10 runs after the sixth inning the game is over you know like why you got why, ruled son yeah. <laughs> why why are these so revolutionary like would anything be lost in the standings and and in the pocketbooks of the freaking earth? purists would come back and say it's ruining all the statistics that some guy hit <laughs> you know, back That's in the like day. five or six less commercial breaks man that's not not acceptable yeah, over 162 <laughs> games you know, we, we haven't if we haven't got the idea of what we're buying by that point we're never going to get it you know like start putting advertisements on the wall like they did in major league two <laughs> i don't care you know barry's bail bonds all over the outfield put something on the jerseys i don't care like pc richards and sons well, yeah, yeah. Uh, was it Frederick? What's what's the motors? Uh, Eastern Motors. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> gonna, like just be all over it. Um, yeah, I mean, those are my ideas. I don't know. Do you guys have I mean, any thoughts of speeding up this process? I, I actually I don't hate the 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 two strike. You know, you foul ball. Hey, you're out, son. You know, like get out of there. Um, they already do it with bunts. <laughs> you know, speed yeah. up the game. Let's go. You know. Um. I don't know. The the idea of like a shot clock or something like that for pitchers is interesting. Uh, I'd have to see like a version of what that looks like. They're with that. They're, they're experimenting yeah. with that. Well, I was reading – so in preparation of this, I, I came across a piece on ESPN from uh, Tim Kirchin about – excuse me, about how – um this how like the strikeout rates have just absolutely annihilated uh you know in, in recent years like there's been four at i should have written the statistics down i'm terrible at that no no, no I, i'm familiar with it i know you're talking but about. it's like you know there's been six x hundred strikeout seasons and four of them are in the last four years or something like that it's just you know obscene statistic after obscene statistic about strikeouts um but one of the things sorry one of the things that he is mentioned as like an alternative or to try to like kind of level the playing field a little bit 
Um, because it talks a lot about how much harder pitchers are throwing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like the average like pitch the fastball now is like 94 miles an hour or something. And to. it was like they had to make the adjustments. Well, it, it was everything like, for but, a long period of time was to, to help the hitters out to make you know get more action. It was like 89 like 10 years ago. And like you think 10 years ago, like oh, or 20 years ago, like oh, that was a long time. It's like, nah, bro, like that's the time I was talking about when I was going to the Yankee game. Right. Um, right. which is you know, I'm old, whatever. Um but uh, like that seems impossible. And then, but anyway, uh, sidetrack and sidetrack, sidetrack. Uh, one of the things that they're trying out in some places is they've moved the pitcher's mound back a foot, I which is an there. interesting idea. Um, so I think like, you know, you have all of these minor league systems and these like, you know, super independent A-league, whatever systems, like throw some of these things down there and like turn those turn them into laboratories and see what you come out with, you know? Yeah, that, I mean, that's what they're doing. I mean, like, yeah. and, and that's fine. Like, I, honestly, they're like... I don't want pitchers getting hurt. So I don't want to give the batters like metal bats. You know, I don't, I don't want yeah. to do anything like Ooh. that. Cause I do think that would kill somebody. Um, well, the college. That was one of my, that's one of my favorite parts of the college world series back when I used to watch that is that ping. Man. The ping. Yeah. Um, just shorten the season. You know, what, what have we learned in, what, what have we learned in, you know, the second 81 games that we didn't know in the first 81 games, it, it 99 out of a hundred times. You've been saying it all night, you know, sure. cash sure. money, homie, you know? Yeah. And, rate of and, diminishing returns though at some point i don't know so if that's the case you need people to start watching then we need to start getting rid of some of these dumb unwritten rules like well, i want and, guys flipping the bat as far as they flipping can <laughs> i want them if to your if running. your bat flip goes farther than your home run you get an extra run <laughs> right, right ex- exactly like i don't know, maybe some fan participation you can throw it back in the, <laughs> the, the you know infield of play you know the, those point dexters would get no seats in the outfield <laughs> like we're getting some athletes out there um but there has to be we got to start celebrating it you know the, the change of the game is is needs to happen um you know start allowing some of these guys to, to show some personality they need some faces you know they need some new faces of the franchise um yeah. you know we talked about ohani you know from that los angeles um tatis jr they're trying to push you know him um and, you know there's a couple other guys out there but in, in but we don't we don't know who they are. Some of that is because we're not paying attention because we're older, um, and, and we've moved on to different sports. Um, even though baseball was my passion, I would much rather watch um, a football game, a basketball game, especially a college basketball game, uh, an MMA or UFC fight. Um, you know, I would rather honestly, I'd rather watch golf. And I can't believe I'm saying that, but I, I really would. You know? Hard no. Yeah, hard pass for you. <laughs> I you know? yeah. All right. We only have a few minutes left, and I want to try to at least get this in um, before the end of our podcast. The Olympics are coming up. Um, speaking of sports, we don't normally get a chance to really like watch. Are there sports um, that you're looking forward to seeing to over the summer, or is there a sport that you're kind of surprised um, isn't more popular than what it is? I'll, I'll just give a, a just a general opinion about the uh, both the summer and the Winter Olympics, but it, the coolest part about them is that there are sports that pop up every single time the Olympics come up that I never even knew existed, much less that there were people (laughs) professionally, I mean, not professionally, but competitively competing in them. And I get to see them on TV. And so people are training for this for four years. (laughs) For their entire lives. And then we get to watch it on NBC or whatever, you know, like handball, for instance, like who watches handball? Oh, you know, and it's Dude, awesome. Handball's on my list. <laughs> like, I, I, I actually think handball should. Be, I, I loved handball in gym class. Yeah, like, handball's a fun game to play. What's that? Handball's a fun game to play. I have never been more exhausted. Uh, two times I've been most exhausted in my life, none of which were my honeymoon. Like, uh, sorry to hear that. <laughs> the, huh. me, I knew it. She knew what she was getting into. Like, <laughs> the, or never mind. Uh, the first one was. Uh, when I, I told you I tried doing MMA and I got my t- S tossed <laughs> like over and over again. Uh, and I told you I won my very first match and I thought I was going to get a call from Dana White that night. And then within 10, my, <laughs> 10 minutes, I was getting punked. Or I was getting hit from angles. I didn't know who was choking me or how they were doing it. But I knew there was, it was a much smaller guy than me. <laughs> Just breaking me off. Like, what, we stopped talking about your honeymoon. Yeah. <laughs> 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 the second time i was playing handball <laughs> and, and i i couldn't do it. racquetball's on that list too by the way um i like uh, oddly um track and field um despite my you know uh zoftic <laughs> status that i uh, exist in now um i used to run track when i was in high school and i actually coached track what for a little track while did you run 
Uh, I actually ran, I ran a hundred meters um, and I did some of the, the horizontal jumping, the, um, not no, the horizontal mambo. Not. I sure as S did. I did the triple jump and I did the long jump. Uh, not well, but I did okay. it. <laughs> um, I was actually, I was decent at the, um, the hundred meter. Excuse me. Who was chasing you? Uh, well, no, I, it was a way to get to get it over faster. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I ran the hundred meter. Of and I, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> at least you at least had a honeymoon. Um, <laughs> The 100 meter I wasn't bad at because um, all the guys that would smoke me uh, because they started better in, in the 55 in the winter time, like in winter track is a 55 meter. Um, I just couldn't get, get get fast enough that quick. Um, but uh, the 100 meter was a little bit better because some of those guys would start to kind of lose it at that 55 mark. I was just getting this rig rolling, you know. <laughs> Um, <laughs> right. you know, at you some smaller your, meets, your pace. Yeah, yeah at, uh, there was a couple. I, I'm not gonna, you know, humble brag. There was a couple of smaller meets where I, you know, had to do it again because I'd done so well the first time, right? Yeah, so I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I got. You. I learned. You know, I thought I knew everything about you. I, I did not. Yeah, yeah no. no. So I, I, I play. I, I placed in a few of my heats. Not a lot. Again, not a lot. A few of them. Um, you know, that I got to go on to the next round and do it again, which was probably in that sense a punishment. But you know, I, I did it. Did I tell um, you I was on my college track team for one month? <laughs> I did not know that about you. I was on, I was a college track athlete for one month, my freshman year. Um, were, Cause everybody I knew, all my friends were on the track team. Um, and they were like, why don't you come out and figure something out? And I went, and I threw the javelin uh, <laughs> for one month. And the very first time I threw the javelin, it helicoptered <laughs> as did the second, third and fourth time. And then the guy who was showing me how to do it, like when I finally like figured out how to make it stick and throw it in the ground, that kind of good stuff, like do the big wide throw. Like I threw it maybe 20 yards. Now I could throw a baseball from end zone to end zone at that time in my life. Then the guy who was like helping me, who was going to like, I was supposed to be as good as like, he could stand in the end zone and throw it through the uprights <laughs> of the other side. And I looked at my coach and I said, I'm supposed to beat him. And he said, yeah, like, you know, he's good. You know, he's, he's top 10 or whatever it is in our, in the country. And I knew then and there <laughs> that my javelin throwing career was coming to a very short end. So I tried for a month. Uh, Mama didn't raise a quitter, <laughs> <laughs> but my dad's a realist. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> And I, I, I knew how that game was going to end. Uh, um, you know, right, one that I, back, one that I'm, just, go ahead, Joe, sorry. Go. If we could add some ratings to this show, maybe we should add some video footage of you throwing that first javelin. Sure. I think that would add our viewership substantially if you can get one of those helicopter throws on here. Yeah, I'll see what I can do. Guys, it's we probably... have less than a minute. I, I hate to cut you off here, you know, um, but I think we're going to have to. Um, real quick, cheers to you guys because we're going to get cut off. Drink a Mully's. Um, guys, good seeing you again. We'll see you guys next week. How's it sound? Sounds good, man. Thanks. Good to Sounds see you guys. delicious. Yeah, good yeah to likewise. You guys. Have a good week. Your javelin throw would look like the time I punted that ball, that basketball and almost it killed that horse. Joke.